So in the previous lesson, we looked at synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions, and double replacement reactions. The last type of reaction that we need to look at for this class is single replacement reactions. In order to do them justice, we need to talk about oxidation reduction because single replacement reactions are oxidation reduction reactions. So let's really quickly just start with some definitions. What exactly is reduction? What is oxidation? Reduction is the gain of electrons, while oxidation is the loss of electrons. And a very easy way of memorizing that is by simply saying oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And so if you think about it, we're talking about electrons. If an element is oxidized, meaning it loses electrons, its charge is going to become more positive. If an element is reduced, meaning it gains electrons, that means its charge is going to be more negative. So let's look at some rules with regards to assigning oxidation numbers. Now, oxidation numbers are simply a way of keeping track of how many electrons are gained, how many electrons are lost, and by whom. So in order to understand oxidation reduction reactions, we have to be able to assign these oxidation numbers. So to start off with, elements always have an oxidation number of 0. If they have no charge and they're by themselves, they have a 0 oxidation number. The sum of the oxidation numbers of compounds is also going to be 0. And then if you have a polyatomic ion, the sum of its oxidation numbers is simply going to be the sum of the charge of that polyatomic ion. Now, oxygen normally has a negative 2 oxidation number, except when it acts as a peroxide, O2. In that case, it has a negative 1 oxidation number. Now, hydrogen has a plus 1 oxidation number, except when it's bound to a metal, like, for example, in the example of sodium hydride that we saw before. In that case, because sodium has a plus one oxidation number, which we'll get to in one second, hydrogen, the hydride ion, would have a negative one oxidation number. Fluorine is always negative one, and while halogens tend to have an oxidation number of negative one, they can actually have variable oxidation states. Group one metals always have a plus one, and group two metals always have a plus two oxidation number. And positive charge generally comes before the negative charge. So keeping all of this in mind, if you see oxygen, normally negative 2 for the most part. Hydrogen normally plus 1 unless it's a hydride. Fluorine norm always negative 1. Other halogens you can't 100% of the time tell, but they tend to be negative 1. Group 1 metals plus 1. Group 2 metals plus 2 oxidation numbers. So let's look at in practice too. I've got potassium permanganate here. The first thing I look at always is oxygen. Oxygen is always minus 2, unless it's a peroxide. And potassium next, because it's always plus 1. So now I need to determine the oxidation number of manganese. Well, that entire compound needs an oxidation number of 0 overall. Well, oxygen is negative 2, but there are 4 of them, so that's a total of negative 8. Potassium has a plus 1, so in order for the overall oxidation number to be 0, manganese must have a plus 7 oxidation number. Okay. For the next one, oxygen is always minus 2 again. And if you look at that, that means that the total oxidation number contributed by oxygen is negative 8. Well, here's a problem. This is a polyatomic ion with a 2 minus charge, meaning the overall oxidation number needs to be minus 2, which means since oxygen is overall minus 8, Sulfur must be plus 6 in order to have an oxidation number of negative 2 for the entire polyatomic ion. So we're now going to be able to talk about single replacement reactions and really analyze them. So the general format for a single replacement reaction is one element, A, reacting with a compound, BC, and A actually goes in and kicks B out, and it'll become AC plus B. So let's look at an example. Notice here, it's asking me to write the net ionic equation and to identify what's being oxidized and reduced. So when I start out, I have solid magnesium, which means I just have Mg, and it's going to react with copper 2 sulfate, which would be CuSO4. Now, magnesium, a positive always kicks out a positive, a negative kicks out a negative. So magnesium, the only thing it can kick out is copper. So magnesium kicks out copper to form a compound with sulfate, so it would be MgSO4. 
four, and then copper is now by itself. Notice magnesium on the reactant side and copper on the product side do not have a charge, and that is key here. This is why it's an oxidation reduction reaction. If instead of magnesium I had fluorine, for example, F2, F would have kicked out SO4 because those are both negatively charged when they're ions. So now I need to write the full ionic reaction for this. Well, I start off, I have magnesium. Copper sulfate is soluble, so I'm going to have copper ions and sulfate ions. Magnesium sulfate is also soluble, so I'm going to have magnesium ions and sulfate ions. And then I have copper there. Remember, I need to eliminate the spectator ions, so I'm going to eliminate sulfate. That's the only thing that is a spectator. Because notice, magnesium on the reactant side is an atom, while it's an ion on the product side. And so what I end up with for my net ionic equation is Mg reacts with copper ion to produce magnesium ion and copper. So now this is the reaction that's happening. This is why it's called an oxidation reduction reaction. Because if you notice, magnesium is losing electrons to become Mg2+, which means magnesium is oxidized. Copper goes from a plus two to a zero charge, which means it gained electrons, which means it is being reduced. Really quickly, we use the activity series because it helps us to predict if a metal is actually going to be oxidized by a salt or an acid. And so in general, a metal will be oxidized, oxidized if it is higher on the table than the metal or hydrogen in the salt or acid it's trying to replace. So for example, what we looked at before, we were saying that magnesium was being oxidized. So let's make sure that's actually accurate. Notice magnesium is higher on the activity series than copper, which means that magnesium can be oxidized, and so that reaction is fine. If I had flipped that and said copper reacts with magnesium sulfate, because copper is not higher on the activity series, copper would not have been oxidized, and in fact, no reaction would have occurred.